What's up YouTube? This is Chris with vbtechsupport.org. Going to teach you guys today on how to execute commands using if then statements. Uh, this can be used in many different ways. Also, this can be used in ways that it doesn't need to be needed. So, basically what I'm trying to say is you can actually code something into your form and you could actually do it a different way that made it more simple. So I'm going to show you an example of both. Also, before I get started with this tutorial, I would like to thank all the people that moved over from my other channel that subscribed to this channel. I would like to thank them. I know this might not be a subject you like to actually watch videos about, but if you do watch videos from episode 1 all the way to episode 1000, whatever I get to, you will learn how to create your own modding tool like the one I'll be releasing tonight. So if you want to create a modding tool for yourself or your channel, Make sure you follow along with these tutorials because this will help you tremendously when you start making your own program. So go ahead and start at Visual Basic. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new project. If you've been working on a project and you need to use an if-then statement on something, you'll click Open Project or go to your recent projects down below. What I'll do is I will click New Project. Then I'll click Windows Form Application. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to put if-then because this tutorial is all about using if-then statements. First, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and resize our form to whatever we need it to be. I'm going to rename the form to if then again for the sake of the tutorial. Now, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert the elements that I want to have on my form. So I'll insert a button and I will insert a text box. So we'll resize this text box, format, and center it in our form horizontally. Again, do the same with the button. Once on the button, we're going to go ahead and click. We'll, we'll, we'll call this Go. I don't know what it really does. I just didn't have anything to put it on. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to double click on our text box. This is where we're going to insert the code for our text box. So what you can do is you put maybe if text box one dot text is equal to quotations VB tech support is awesome. Then we'll go then. There's our then. Then what we'll do is we'll go button one dot enabled is equal to true. Now what this does is this actually activates our button. But if you look what we do right here, oh excuse me for that. If you look what we do right here, if we debug this, as you can tell our button is already active and it's not coded so it's not doing anything so this is what we need to change you can do this one of two ways and before the tutorial I was telling you how coding can make things longer and less simple well this is an example I am going to use so if you just click your button and you go here and you just roll up to enabled under your properties menu just double click that double click it with your mouse and it should say false or you can just click a down arrow and click false now once we debug this, you can see our button is disabled and it does not allow us to click it. Also, if we go ahead and click our button and we go enable true, I can show you the longer way for this to work. So basically just double click your form and whatever you want to be disabled, which in this case button 1, so you go button 1.enabled is equal to false. This achieves the same effect as I'll show you now but it takes more time even though it's not really that time consuming it just makes it more difficult than what it should be so we'll just go ahead and delete this code here go delete all that we don't even need that and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and on our button click we're gonna go ahead and let me go ahead and fix this in class I accidentally deleted in class we had an error up here and then what we're going to do is we have the button to do something. So if the text box equals VB Tech Support is awesome, then our button one will be dis will be enabled. So we want our button one to do something. So we can do a message box, of course. So just go ahead, message box dot show. And this is picking up actually from the last tutorial on how to create message box. And then we'll go. You know, that's right something random like that and we also let's just create a title for this so we just go ahead and the title would be MHM for mm-hmm I don't know so that's just a just a quick example 
um, just make sure that we do have our button disabled on the load and now what we're going to do is you can tweak for the, some of these settings I always like to password characters you can if it's a password field you can actually put characters in there but I always like to use text align and center so once we have that we're just going to debug our program so what it was was DB tech support is awesome as you can see as soon as we have that inserted our go button is active so once you click that you know that's right mm-hmm which was our title so yeah guys that's just a very quick example on how to use if then statements in visual basic um, I'll also in my next tutorial which I might be making in a few minutes I will get in how to declare variables uh, to actually create message boxes or anything in your project so yeah guys hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, please rate comment and subscribe and I hope to see you guys very soon